Hi, my name is Alex Casano and I'm the events coordinator here at the Clearwater Historical Society. Today we will be having a representative and volunteer from the Dolly Museum in St. Petersburg. They will be speaking about the history of the Dolly Museum as well as the famed Spanish artist Salvador Dali. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you. Okay, welcome to the Salvador Dali Museum, sort of virtual. Mm -hmm. Who's Salvador Dali? Hmm. Who is Salvador Dali? A famous painter. He was, yeah, known for surrealism, which is like painting your dreams or painting your um, imaginary thoughts. And he was born May 11th, 1904, and he died January 23rd, 1989. He was 84 when he passed away, and I'll tell you more about that as we go. And they're saying he was a painter, writer, filmmaker, sculptor, inventor, and dreamer. And again, I'll tell you more as we're going along. So here he is as a little guy, and his parents, his father was the town notary, which you may know, and that was a prestigious position back in those days, and in this small town of Figueres, Spain, northeast Spain. So he got to dress very nicely, and he had his little outfits on, and he was looking very stylish there, and there's his dad. And he and his dad kind of butted heads, which I'll tell you more as we go. I know, I think you can see this, he was born nine months and 11 days after his older brother passed away. You know that story? Do you know? why the little boy passed away. No. He had um, either the flu or some kind of respiratory thing. And so 100 years ago, you died of the flu. You still die of the flu, obviously. Yeah. So the parents were so overwhelmed by the death of the, of the first baby that they wanted to have another baby nine months and 11 days later. So our Dali, the one you know, was named after the dead brother like there weren't other names. <laughs> oh my. Um, and here, can you see this well enough? This is an aunt, his mom and dad. Dolly is a little guy. Another aunt, his baby sister, Anna Maria, which I'll tell you more about, and grandma. And they had a little apartment on the coast. So Figueres, the town where he was born, is inland, but there was an apartment or a little sort of a oh, clay house on the coast. And here's a picture that Dolly painted of himself, a portrait of a sick child. He was not sick, but it was very dramatic. <laughs> look, how, look how long his fingers are. And <laughs> birds were very popular as pets then. Mm -hmm. And here he is with his sister, Anna Maria, and she was his main female model. So there she is, she was quite pretty. And there is a picture of her that Dolly did. Do you know about Dolly and Anna Maria? Mm -hmm. no. They were very close. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is being filmed, so I'll be very, very good. I'll be a good girl. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Dolly was <laughs> no. Dolly was raised Catholic by his mom, but his father was an atheist. So this was um, really sort of confusing, to say the least. And Dolly, at first, uh, embraced his Catholicism. Then when he joined the Surrealists, he became an atheist too, and then later on he came back to his Catholic roots. That's cool. That's cool. Cool. Yeah. And confusing. Yeah. So this is a Dolly quote. At the age of six I wanted to be a cook. At seven I wanted to be Napoleon. And my ambition has been growing steadily ever since. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and because his brother had died, his parents were very, very conscious of giving him a lot of attention. So he was just this embraced boy who, when he, wait, when he went away to art school, nobody was paying attention yet. Um, I don't really know too much about Edward James here, but he was a collector and he was very wealthy. But I do know these people. So A. Reynolds Morse, like Morse code, and his wife Eleanor, and then Dolly and his wife Gala. Um, they're the ones who gave all the paintings to the Dolly Museum, and they were from Ohio, and Mr. and Mrs. Morse were in the plastic injection molding business, so anything that's plastic, like my name badge, has to be molded in something, and they made the equipment that did the molding. 
Well, so think of plastics in the 40s. They were quite wealthy also. So after the first painting they bought of Dali's and met Dali, uh, they, they bought 96 more. And, oh, wow. Like, I know. So there's 97 paintings there and a couple thousand graphics and watercolors and jewelry and sculpture and it went on and on and they were buddies with Dolly and his wife and because I've been at the museum so long I knew them and we got to ask a lot of sort of inappropriate questions <laughs> and, but they told us like no I won't tell you because we're being filmed I'll tell you later. <laughs> Um, so this is Dali on the coast uh, with his friend Federico Garcia Lorca. Lorca was in love with Dali. Dali, for the most part, and being very careful, I'll tell you, Dali was sort of asexual. Um, and just, I'll tell you more in a minute. And these are the other surrealists. So this was the surrealist team in about 1929. Surrealism, surrealism started in 1924, and Dolly joined in 1929 when they were having kind of a switch over of how the movement would go. So surrealism at first was a lot of writing, and then painting came, and sculpture, and poetry, and oh, there they are. And then, Gala. Do you know about Gala? Mm -hmm. Who was Gala? His wife. His wife, yes. Mm -hmm. So, I'm sorry, what? Also his inspiration. His inspiration, his muse, is that what you said? Yes, his muse. So, hmm, 1929, Dali has gone through college, the Academy of Fine Arts in Madrid. He went through all four years until the last day when he had to take his final exams and he got mad at his teachers and he said, none of you people are fit to judge me. I'm going to be more famous than any of you ever will be. And he walked out of school and left and didn't get his degree. <laughs> so his father, I'm serious, do you know this story? No. His father was furious, furious at him. And his father was this really domineering person while his mother had been very soft and soft-spoken and mushy and all that. And by the way, his mom died when he was 16. She had cancer. So his aunt, in the meantime, his father married the mother's aunt. So his aunt became his stepmother. This all happened within a year. So, 1929, he's kicked out of school. He doesn't graduate. He's back home living with his family. And he invites several of the Surrealists to come visit because Surrealism was the hot art movement of the time. So they come for a visit. And this woman is married to Paul Eluard, who was a Surrealist poet. Her name is Gala. She was from Russia. Her real name is Helena Dakinov Duvelina. We just call her Gala. Everybody <laughs> called her Gala. <laughs> All right. And business manager. She was really good with business where he was not. He was the good artist and she was the good businesswoman. Okay, like you said, muse, love, friend, and business manager. And so here they are. She is a shoe on her head. Shoe on her head is a hat. And this was done by Dolly, but originated um, by a designer who I can't think of, but a very famous designer. And there they are on the beach, and there are her, her eyes, and he was just sort of mesmerized by her. And his most favorite, favorite artist was Vermeer. So Girl with Pearl Earring, we know Vermeer, right? And that's a Vermeer, Vermeer painting, and Dolly, as a young man, painted himself like this. So he was just really being cool and learning different styles. One of his most famous early paintings is Basket of Bread. And when you think of how young he, he was when he did this, he was 22. It's just really very lovely, very well painted. The basket is done well, the bread looks real. And you see kind of a light shining here. And this is a Vermeer painting, um, The Milkmaid. I love Vermeer. You guys know Vermeer, right? Mm -hmm. Girl with pearl earring. So Dolly was, obviously it's not the same painting, but the same sort of light display. And he liked to paint himself, as we've already seen. Here's another painting of him upstairs in the house that was on the coast. And painting himself, why not? And this is how he did it. He would set up several mirrors around the room so that he could look and see 
what it looked like. So that's how they're showing how we painted it. Why not? And famous architects, teachers, Anthony Gaudi. Do you know Gaudi? If you go to Spain, look for this, because it's still there, and I think it's an apartment building. And Dolly admired Gaudi. And he also got to meet Sigmund Freud. Hmm. Hmm. They were studying Freud in school, and so Dolly and Freud met, and after the meeting, they asked Mr. Freud, what do you think of Dolly? And he said, Dolly is quite a Spaniard. And when, <laughs> and when they asked Dolly, what did you think of Sigmund Freud? He said, Freud's head is in the shape of a snail. <laughs> Which will make sense in a minute. <laughs> uh -huh. um, I do all of my work subconsciously. I never use models or paint from life or landscapes. It's all imagination. I see everything in a dream as I am working, and when I have finished a picture, I decide what the title is to be. Okay, um, a lot of the titles make no sense. <laughs> and um, the snail grows in a spiral. Dolly was just inspired by the spiral, and it was long before the DNA molecule was discovered, but he was just enthralled with it. So or a nautilus shell. So a lot of the things, are, think, a lot of the things, a lot of the objects in his paintings are in spirals, or the whole painting's in a spiral. And this is a guy whose name I can't pronounce, Mantia Gaka. Have you ever heard of this person? Me neither. Um, but ratio in golden spirals. So if you set up this perfect ratio of one plus two is three, Two plus three is five, three, and it goes like that. So it's Fibonacci. that's it, Fibonacci. Yes, thanks, Dad. <laughs> um, so Dolly was learning about that and just was enthralled. And it was again before the DNA molecule was discovered by Crick and Watson. But you can see how he set things up. And there it is again, pleasing to the eye. Connect opposite corners. We could go outside and do this in the sand. And there's that sequence. And even his big paintings are like that. Remember the big paintings in the museum? They're just huge. It took about a year to paint each one. He'd be doing other things besides painting that painting, like doing watercolors or sculpture or something to get money coming in, and then go back to the painting. I think there's a picture of him in his studio painting the big paintings. Yeah, he loved rhinoceros and rhinoceros horns, so of course he had to have a hat to go with that, yes. <laughs> I know, and there you've got it again. He was quite the character, but you know that, right? <laughs> yes. Um, quantum physics, you guys. <laughs> but, again, it's set up like this. This painting was in Mr. and Mrs. Morris's son's bedroom. It's in the museum now. And who is this guy over here? Werner Heisenberg? I don't, do you know who that is? Oh, who is it? Tell us. The German famous. Okay, I feel so dumb. No, no? don't know him? He wrote uh, Physics and Philosophy. It's actually a very interesting book because it kind of meshes the physical world with philosophical concepts. I like that. Yeah. That's why Alex is so smart because you guys are so smart. <laughs> <laughs> and the table that Dolly did was based on another table by another artist, and so Dolly liked to copy other artists mm -hmm. also, and they copied him too. Wow. So that's Dolly's table, and this is the other artist's table, if it'll let me go back. And I'm trying to think of who it is. Anybody? Mm -hmm. No, that's oh. okay. It's not Renoir, but um, I know what you mean, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. something. And so, after Crick and Watson discovered the DNA molecule, Dolly incorporated it as a DNA molecule into his paintings. So, this has the longest one-word title of any painting ever anywhere in the world, mm -hmm. and the title is Galaxy, Dolacy, desoxyribonucleic acid. So his wife, Gala, is down here with her back to you. This is God at the top of the painting. 
looking down, so this is the top of his head, so his nose is sticking out, and his arm, God's arm, is here toward Gala's head. I know it might be really hard to see, but God is bringing Jesus back to heaven. So this is a very faded out picture of Jesus and an arm and his head upside down and his torso. You can sort of see the legs here in the blood. So a resurrection. This is the prophet Isaiah holding a banner which has the name of this painting on it. This looks like a computer floppy disk from way back when. Does anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and this is a DNA molecule. And this is the molecular structure for salt or sodium, as it's a basic component of almost everything. And I don't know if you can see this. Right there. It's very, very hard to see, but there's a woman lying on the beach wearing black stockings. Dolly had just met Hugh Hefner, the Playboy guy, so he had to add that in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here he, is. here he is upstairs in his studio um, painting the big paintings. So you can see, big, yes, big, a year to paint, and there's like a lighter part of the floor here. Mm -hmm. And he had had his assistant cut a hole in the floor on the second floor of the studio do you know this story? Mm -hmm. Story. It, it is, it's still there, about eight inches thick, wide, and he just cut out the floor so they could rig the paintings up from the ceiling with pulleys and ropes, and the rest of the painting would be downstairs, and he could, when it dried, roller it back up and paint it eye level. Mm -hmm. So the painting oh. is pretty imaginative. Very and nice. it's still there. If you ever go to Figueres or Port Gat, go, go. <laughs> and it's there, and it's open, and you can see. It's pretty amazing. And so he's, you know, hanging out. And for some reason, he, reason, he always painted nice clothes. Or I have never seen him painting pictures of him painting in icky clothes. Mm -hmm. So he didn't have his like, jeans and shorts on. So more DNA, same painting, a little bit up closer. There's hard to see. Woman on the beach. I don't know what that is. It's a double helix spiral. Why such a great interest in science? Because artists scarcely interest me at all. Uh, I believe that artists should have some notion of science in order to trade, uh, tread a different terrain, which is that of unity. So that's Dolly's thinking. Okay. But he hung out with other, other artists all the time. So <laughs> famous, famous painting. You know where this one is in real life? Persistence of memory. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's in New York. It's in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and it was it, it was bought by an art dealer, a, a woman who sold it immediately to an art dealer who sold it to the Museum of Modern Art. This all happened within days. Um, one of the most famous paintings in the world. It's probably what you know Dolly for best, mm -hmm. and it came to our museum in St. Pete for a few months while they were redoing the Museum of Modern Art. There were guards around it, it was amazing. In the 50s, Dolly painted um, disintegration of the persistence of memory. So he painted the same painting after the bomb was dropped during the war. And he imagined how this painting would look with, it looks like it's being destructed, but he said it's an implosion. If people would work together and be unified, we could all come together again. Does that sound familiar? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A few days ago? Yes. OK. I won't get pulled. Um, so you have the melted clock, the melted watch, and that's here and here. This is the landscape right outside of where Dolly lived on the coast. Time was just this fluid thing to Dolly. It isn't this big, mysterious thing. It's just time goes on. It's been the same, same and different at the same time. And? The atom has a more influence on Dolly. So, Dolly's favorite Spanish artist is uh, Velazquez, who painted a painting with this little princess in it. And when Dolly painted it, his version of it, he painted her like exploding or imploding with all the atoms going every which direction. And you can see it's the same little girl. Her, her face, and I don't know if you can see it from far away, her
her face is done with rhinoceros horns. So he's very influenced by the rhinoceros because his horn grows in a spiral. Mm -hmm. It's all this big, hairy, callousy thing. Mm -hmm. All right, and one, one other thing to look at in here. You see a man right there. This is Velazquez painting this painting on the wall of the Prada Museum in Spain. We have to go and see this. <laughs> um, and so this is right here. And even though this is really a painting, it wasn't painted directly on the wall. But Dolly is giving uh, acknowledgement to Velazquez. Am I boring you guys? Are you good? No, no, no. okay. Okay, cool. So, back to where Dolly was born. He was born in this little town called Figueres. And the closest town that you would probably know is Barcelona. And it's really pretty there. It's very hilly, and the beach is really beautiful. It's all craggly because the wind blows off the Mediterranean and makes these weird rock formations. And he, this whole area is known as Catalonia, and they were always trying to break off from Spain and be their own country. And they had a different dialect. Um, I understand a little bit of Spanish. But when I got there, I did not understand them. It's a mixture of French and Spanish, and it's really kind of cool. And everybody was really nice. And this little tiny town he was born is, it, it's like Gulfport. It's, so, it's tiny, um, but a very, very nice place to grow up and live. OK. And so when I told you his family had a little clay kind of adobe house. It was on this inlet. And Dolly would go up in the hills with this easel, and he would paint the little town. So here's a photograph of this little town called Cadaquez. C-A-D-A-Q-U-E-S, Cadaquez. And here's Dolly's painting of this little town. So he's up in the hills with this easel. He's still a kid. And he looks down and paints this beautiful little town, which is still there and which looks like this. Again, we have to go when it's <laughs> safe again. <laughs> and lots of weird rock formations. Have you seen this before? OK. Dolly thought that this rock, remember the wind's blowing like crazy off the Mediterranean. He thought that that rock looked like a face bent over and balanced on a nose. Mm -hmm. It's known as the rock of Cayero. C-A-L-L-E-R-O. My Spanish isn't great, but you get it. Um, and Dolly sometimes pictured himself as this rock. And so you'll see this painted over and over and over again in his paintings. Let's see if we can find it in some of his paintings. One of the most fortunate things which has happened to me was that I was born Spanish, being Spanish. Yes. What is surrealism? What is surrealism? Juxtaposition, dislocation, displacement, double images, metamorphosis, transformation, dreamlike images, and symbolism. Yeah, painting your dreams. <laughs> Even after all these years, it's just like that was the in art form of the day. Okay, and it's really cool, and he was really cool. And he grew up prior to the world. He, he wow. was born in 1904, so yeah, prior to World War I. Um, that was very devastating on that area. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning of World War II, because his wife was Jewish, it was very not safe for him to live there in Spain anymore. So they escaped through Portugal in late 1939 and came to America where it was safe. And he came to New York, and they lived in New York, and then California where he met a lot of Hollywood people and worked with Alfred Hitchcock and mm -hmm. other movie moguls, I guess you'd say. And that's when he started becoming really, really known. He was already kind of known in those early years. Um, he had his first art show in Figueres when he was a little kid. And, and the little basket of bread that you saw that was just so beautifully done, mm -hmm. that's the first Dali painting that came to America. And people started thinking, oh, this kid's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Did I tell you? I didn't tell you the story of his sister and Gala, did I? Do you know the story? Mm -hmm. Please tell me if I'm boring you. You know what I'll say? No. 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 So he and his sister were very close, as I said. But, she, and she was his main female model all those early years. She's very pretty. 
But when he met Gala, he and Gala, when she came to the Surrealist get-together in 1929, he and Gala hit it off instantly. She left her husband, she left her daughter, she went with Dolly, she thought Dolly would be more important than her husband Paul Eluard ever would be. She divorced Paul Eluard, she and Dolly got married, they got married three times. Okay. First time in a civil ceremony, second time in a religious ceremony, they went to Rome and got dispensation for her having, her having been married before. And then in the third time, they were in New York in the 60s with Andy Warhol and had a party. <laughs> okay, so back to, I know, back to juxtaposition. So the lobster telephone, and Dolly did this, this on purpose. Um, two things that make you know, no sense whatsoever, but if you pick up the telephone and talk into it, you're talking to lobster's crotch. I'm sorry, but that's what he said. <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, placing an object in a location where it doesn't belong. <laughs> All right, the weaning of furniture nutrition is the name of this painting. So here's the same inlet where Dolly lived. This is a sugar mill here, this little building. This is his nanny who took care of him um, when he was a kid. So his mom died when he was 16, but they also had a nanny. And she's being held up by a crutch. She's fixing one of the fishermen's nets. If you take this piece out of her, it's here. It's a little drawer. And if you take the center out of the drawer, it's another drawer with a medicine bottle on it. So he was really good at painting things that were really there and then imagining other things that didn't make sense except to him. Hole in her back and held up by a crutch, a symbol often used by Dolly, seen as made up of puzzle pieces that fit together. Um, and I'm trying to be really careful, but crutches were naughty. Okay, holding up something naughty. <laughs> okay, double images. So tell me what you see. There's two things. A rabbit, rabbit. Yeah, and a, a duck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, cool. So he, he Dali, was not the first to do double <laughs> image paintings, but really good at them. And this one is uh, all kinds of stuff that make up the face. It's all kinds of vegetables and fruits. <laughs> Um, double images to trick your eye. What you see from far away is different from the details that you see when you're close up. All right, here's the Dolly double image painting. It's called Old Age, Adolescence, and Infancy. What do you see? Alex? Faces. Faces. Um, uh huh. So he's I'm using thinking. old, I'm sorry. Like coming out of a cave into a Yeah, it, it does look like a cave. It was um, old Roman ruins that were around where Dolly lived. So you have three ages here. So there's an older man and, or woman. It looks like a man because there's a mustache, part of her dress. And there's a woman sort of standing like this. His head, is, her head is his eye and her shoulder and arm is the nose and where the dress would be crinkled up is the face or the mouth rather. And then in this one, Dolly is a little boy sitting next to the same nursemaid oh, wow. and looking through this sort of cave-like opening that you said, and the two um, mountains, yeah, they have eyes, and so adolescence. And here it's a little hard to see, but right here there's a little baby. Mm -hmm. So you've got the same nursemaid with the net again and little teeth. It's easier if you come to the museum. You can still come to the museum, you know? We just can't give tours right now because of the social distancing. distancing. So, old age, adolescence, and infancy. He was really good at it, would never, never tell how. And he wouldn't even tell the Morses how he did it. And the Morses were the people who donated everything to us, collected everything, wrote everything down, taught us in the old days, and the ones we asked the inappropriate questions to. <laughs> I'll tell you later when you're not filming, Alex. Um, and there we are again, I know. He's just really unbelievable. Okay, 
So these are actual drawing pencils, Venus drawing pencils. There is a Toreador. And there's the painting that Dolly did using the idea of the Venus drawing pencils. There's a Venus on the box. And there's a double image here. Let me see if it, there we go. So the bullfighter double image yeah. is right here. And the Venus is right there too. Other things in this. Do you know other stuff in this painting? There's another double image. Do you remember? Okay, it, it's probably really hard to see, but part of the rocks of the coast of Spain make the bull, there's a horn there and a horn there, and the picks that go into the bull's back there. Dolly is a little boy, again, in his sailor suit. And not, and Gala, his wife, now she's the female model, even though she's older but main female model. So she's up here. She did not like bullfighting. She was Russian. She said, do not paint a painting about bullfighting and put me in it. So he put her in it, of course. <laughs> um, <laughs> and any time that she's, any time that they're both in these paintings, and they are quite freq frequently both in the paintings, so she's above him. So there she is, and there he is. She's always placed higher. He always wanted to honor her. The next time you're at the museum, I want you to know there's 31 Venuses in this painting. Wow. 31. I can only find 30. So there's obviously that, and then the one from the drawing pencils. There's a whole bunch of Venus statues. There's a Venus in here in these dots, which is really hard to see. Um, but 31 Venus. Venus. Wow. Venuses? Venus? Veni? How do you say it? <laughs> but it's quite cool. Metamorphosis. Um, what shapes appear to be incorrect? Oh, like the piano. Um, the next door neighbors of the Dolly family play piano, and he would listen, and he has it all melty, and he's. Uh, I'll go to something I know more. Okay. The average bureaucrat. So his dad was the town notary, which was like being the country lawyer. His dad, as soon as he met Gala, as soon as Dali met Gala, and she was married to someone else, this was very, very not cool in the Dali family, and he kicks Dali out of the family, and Dali and Gala go off to Paris where people are helping them, and Dali paints a painting of his father after this happens, the average bureaucrat. So his father was a big guy with a big mustache, and he paints his dad here, and if you open up the head, there were no brains in there, just some shells from the beach and some rocks from the beach. Um, and notice this poor man has no ears because not only was he not thinking, he was not listening. So this was his way of getting back at his dad. And this is the shadow from one of the nearby mountains and those weird rock formations on the beach. Hmm. Symbolism. Here's the crutches again. This is, um, a lot of Dolly's paintings are sort of R-rated. You know that, right? Yeah. This one's um, pretty graphic. So Daddy Long Legs of the Evening Hope is the name of this painting. It's the very first painting that Mr. and Mrs. Morse purchased in this whole conglomeration of cool stuff. Biggest collection on this side of the world. Um, you have to go to Spain if you want to see more, but we have more than anybody. Isn't that amazing? Wow. Do you know how come we have, how this happened? Did I ever tell you that? Or do you know that? No. Why, did, why did we end up with this? So Mr. Morse is from Ohio, and he's got this big collection. He's making this plastic injection molding equipment. He opens up part of his office building to be a mini Dali museum. And then he, who's from Ohio? Anybody? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm both my parents. So he realizes after a time that maybe Ohio isn't the tourist mecca of the world and if people really, really, people really, really should see this. So he writes a story in 1980 in the Wall Street Journal and he basically said, I have this huge collection of Dolly's works, who wants it? You have to make a one artist museum out of it. No such thing back then. There are now, but no such thing. Did you ever go, you're too young to have gone there. Um, <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> um, so, 
people here, local people here, saw the story in the Wall Street Journal, contacted Mr. and Mrs. Morse and said, how about St. Pete? And that's why we have it. It could have been anywhere, but it had to stay together, not tend to LA and tend to Paris. So that's why we have it. First painting they bought, I know, um, it was less than $2,000 back then. Daddy Longlegs of the Evening Hope was painted during the Second World War. It was 1940, and Dolly was in America. So Dolly has painted the beach where he was from, little shells and rocks from the beach, which we've already seen. There is, remember the rock that was bent over and balanced on its nose? Mm -hmm. So here it is again. It's got a lot of bugs in it, and you'll see bugs in Dolly's paintings all over the place. That means death or decay. Bugs mean death or decay. He was terrified of daddy long leg spiders, but there is a legend in Spain that if you see a daddy long leg spider, what does it mean? Good luck. Good luck, exactly. It means you'll have good luck the next day. So there's kind of a little rosy glow around the spider. And if you follow the rock, which doesn't have a body attached to it normally, it's attached to a female body, and the two inkwells up there represent the signing of the peace treaties. Nobody had, oh, excuse me, nobody had signed peace treaties in 1940, but Dolly was hopeful. So hopeful and hopeful, yet the bugs mean decay and death. And you end up with the body holding a limp cello. Once again, the neighbors who had the piano also played the cello. And Dolly, when the Morses asked Dolly why our musical instruments melted, he said, because art as Art is better than music as a, music wasn't as good as painting, basically, is what he said. So it's sort of <laughs> secondary. I'm sorry if people play music here, but um, that was Dolly's reference. Um, World War II style airplane coming out of the cannon. He did not like mechanical things, so he shows the airplane is limp. Lots of cr crutches holding up different objects in the paintings. This one's very obviously very phallic. And um, if you look through his paintings, you're going to find a lot of things like that. <laughs> I'm trying to be good. Okay. <laughs> um, and here it is again. How do you feel when looking at this? How do you feel when looking at this painting? What is it? Sick. And that's what it's was like the summer. It, it, the summer is like everything. Like tired and like droopy and yeah. just like yeah. waste, uh -huh. like, like without energy, you know. And that's yeah. probably how it was back then, yeah. right at the beginning of the war. Language. Little angel pointing in, yeah, mm -hmm. very much. We're going to have they a very entitled it hope. It's kind of funny. Yeah, yeah. isn't it? Opposite. So yeah. you've got, like I said, both. You've got good things in it and mm -hmm. tired, exhausted, and sad stuff yeah. in it which certainly Europe was exploding at the time and not the Europe he had grown up in. I'll, I'll be a genius and the world will admire me. Perhaps I'll be despised and despised and misunderstood, but I'll be a genius, a great genius, I'm certain of it. Yes. <laughs> Sounds familiar. <laughs> and we all recognize the building, so cool. Um, this was a parking lot when I was a little kid. Wow. Do you remember that? Does anybody, was anybody from St. Pete? Uh, I grew up there, and I grew up here too. But uh, it was an old parking lot. It had trailers in it, like the trailers you would house if you didn't need a trailer at the moment, like a mobile home. Uh, so we're just large collection outside of Europe. Our mission, should I read that to you, or you don't need that? Or do you? You can read it. Here's Warren Shear's ex expertly curated collection. Preserving legacy, Dolly inspired events. Someday we're going to have events again. Mm -hmm. Someday we'll be open for real tours again. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, huh. going to Morton Plant. Okay, um, it's a 501c3. I think you guys are too. This establishment mm -hmm. and um, has anybody come to see other exhibits like Picasso or Frida Kahlo? When you get a chance. Oh, there's a really cool, right now, Van Gogh yeah, exhibit. I 
Yeah. Yeah. Have you gone to that? No. Oh, you can you can come to that. You have to make a reservation because they're doing very careful, not overcrowding. But it's really interesting, and it shows a whole several several Van Gogh paintings and some of his writings, and it makes you cry. And if you get dizzy really easily, go with somebody that you can hold on to because it's like it's moving. <laughs> I do too. I, I can only go in for a couple minutes at a time, but it's very cool and it'll be up until April 11th if you have a chance to go. So there's usually a little bit of a lull time in February. Um, it seems to be when kids go back to school, I don't know, or people go back <laughs> up north. Um, but it's always a quieter time, so make your reservation. Um, and this is no longer exactly right. But we still have volunteers and we still have staff, of course. And, uh, no yoga, mm, 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 go on the web page for the poetry readings. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you.